Okay guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how you can make a miniature table using a floor swatch. I got this from the local hardware store um, when I was considering doing a floor. Home Depot. Yeah, at Home Depot. So you can find them there. They're free samples. And um, they're like four by four. So if you keep it at its full size, it would be a four foot table. If you cut it down, then you can make it whatever size you want. But basically you're going to get yourself some fine molding, which is also sold at Home Depot. It's in the um, decorative molding section. It's very, very small. And you're going to cut this to fit around the base of this floor swatch. Okay, and then you're going to glue it. And we're going to actually hot glue this around here because this has like a laminate back, so it would be really hard to get anything to stick to this. So we're just going to hot glue it, and you won't see that. See how the pieces are. Okay, while we're waiting on the hot glue to get cut, this is the floor piece that I've done. It's a 4x4, four four, and we're going to make it 30 inches high for our table. So these here we're cutting at 30 inches, and what this is is the back of a paint stick. Okay, so we cut this to 30 inches. Now, when I did mine, I didn't go from the bottom to 30 inches. I went up a little bit because I wanted to have this little curve up higher but you can cut yours however you want then I also cut two smaller pieces at two inches which would give you a two foot gap but so we're gonna go ahead and get started okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just go ahead we've got the four pieces of molding lined up we're gonna just put a little tiny bit of glue in each corner to kind of seal it until we get it set where we want it to be. Watch your father's finger. It'll only burn once. All right, now we're going to let that cool off. And yes, it is a bit messy underneath of there. Now you could use some E6000 and save yourself from seeing all that, but you're going to have to leave it sit overnight if you use E6000. And the bottom of the table is never seen, so I really don't care what the bottom of the table looks like personally. Okay, so what I did, I didn't use stain. I just use some watered down acrylic. I mean like really, really watered down acrylic. It's like very, very watery with just a little bit of color into it. And then I just went ahead and brushed it on there. After I brushed it, like I just went like a real thin line like that. Then I just took a piece of tissue and I just wiped it off. That's it. Now it's not the same exact color of this because it's not an oak stain. So if you want it to match, you're gonna have to get actual stain to do it. But I'm not even sure if I'm gonna keep it brown or if I'm gonna paint it another color. I'm undecided. I kinda like the idea of having like a blue or something cause it's a country look table. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're making the very, very bottom piece of the table and we went half the width of a dime and two and a half inches up on the yeah, paint it's stirrer. about three eighths of an inch if you don't have a dime. Mm. I'm just making the curve on that end. I do the same thing on this end. Well, it's three eighths of an inch so you can carry that line down so you, you know where you're going. And you're going to do the same thing on this half. You get two pieces out of each one. So you need to cut two because you have two legs that's coming down. Yeah. What did I say? Three legs. Now, if you have a bandsaw, you can cut this on your bandsaw. If you don't have a bandsaw, 
then you can cut it here with your box miter saw and then split it in half and then just sand the corners round. That's about three eighths of it. Okay, so once you have your two pieces split, what you're gonna do is come up an eighth of an inch from the bottom and you're gonna draw a line to look like this. Then you can cut this with your saw, make it easy. You make two, one for each side of the table. we have these cut the way we want we can lightly sand them and the best way to sand them without having an electric sander is to take a piece of board piece of wood wrap your foil or your sand paper around it because it creates a little roundness to it and just kind of just go at it like that right there in those corners Now, the more time you put in the sanding, the smoother it's going to be, obviously. So, it's completely up to you as to how smooth you want it to be. Okay, so you want to make sure they're both exactly the same. And by doing that, I put them together. And then I'm sanding them on the bottom together. You do want to try to go with the grain, but when you're doing this part, it's not really possible to go with the grain. Okay, after you've sanded them pretty good, you want to go ahead and mark the center on each one. Mark the center up here. Now, there's two options here. Option one, you can glue this to the center like this, and you can have a large base in the middle. Or option two, you can have a small base by putting a small piece of wood in the middle. It's completely up to you. Okay, so I went ahead and cut this at two inches as well, so we'll go ahead and mark that on our template as an option. Now, if you want to make the center with the larger one, you can do that. And then you can also, if you want to put two and turn them sideways, you can make a shelf in the middle. I thought about that and it would work. I'm just not gonna do that. So if you wanted to do that with the shelf, let me get my sand dust away. If you wanted to do that with the shelf, then what you would do is you would put it here and then here. And then you would have this up here and that would be how you would glue it. Okay, or you could do it at the bottom, the very, very bottom, as long as you still have some in the center, and then glue it like that. Now, that's just an option if you want a shelf. Some people have shelves in the middle of their table um, base. 
So the options are up to you. I know before I said there was two options, but there's actually three if you want to add the shelf. All right, now what we're going to do, because I thought about it and I thought that it would look better this way, is the first thing we're going to get some Elmer's glue for wood, and then we are going to glue the short side up. And we're going to put it directly in the center, like this, of each one. And then we'll let it dry after we apply the glue. Okay, so if you don't have a fine applicator, what you can do is you can put a little bit of glue on your toothpick. Okay, so I went ahead and I put some on the center. And actually, I need to mark the center of this real quick because I did not do that. Now that I have the center mark, I'm going to go ahead and take my toothpick that has my glue on it, and I'm going to apply it to here. You don't want a whole lot because what happens if you put too much on here, it'll squeeze out on your other parts of your wood. Then we just want to put it in the direct center here. You want to make sure that's good and tight, like that. Make sure you have it facing the correct direction. That does not look like the center. I'm going to have to measure that. Okay, so when you have the center mark, there's two ways you can do it. If you're going to do the option with the small piece of wood, um, you can put a little hole inside here, wide enough for a toothpick to go in, and then insert it in the same way with here by putting a hole in here as well. Or you can just glue it and let it dry. Okay, so what I did is I put the two together and then I drilled a hole using this little exacto knife drill bit. They sell these at your local hardware store, or local craft store rather you won't find them in a hardware store. Well, that wasn't quite dry yet, so I'll have to glue that back on there. Um, but you can actually get these um, at Hobby Lobby. They're in a couple different sections. They're with like the uh, like modeling stuff, and then they're over with the wood crafts. So if you go there, you'll be able to find it there. Um, they're very hard to find, and I don't know what they're called. However, before I found them, because they were very hard for me to locate, I actually um, made this just using a regular X-Acto knife that had the screw adjustable top and the lock up here with a very small um, drill bit. So if you can't find it, they're not that difficult to make. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and glue that back on since I just unglued it. And I'm going to put a, I also, drilled a hole in the edge of this with this. I just went right through. It's very simple to do. I'll show you real quick with this one. You just go in the center and then you keep turning it. I would not use a power drill for this. You will end up like seriously hurting yourself. And then it creates that hole. Okay, then I took the toothpick with the pointy end and stuck it in there and then I cut it off. Now I'm going to apply a tiny bit of glue to 
to go completely around that. Just going to smooth it out a bit. And I'm going to apply it into here. Now you're going to have to work it into that hole because that hole is not going to be very, very loose if you did it correctly. Okay, then you're going to do the same thing here with the glue. Try not to use too much of the glue to where it's squishing out, but you need enough to where it's going to actually hold on to that when you apply the wood to it. Okay, and then I'm going to apply that one in the same way I just did that, only I'm going to just kind of squish it in there. Okay, then I should have it to where it's like that. Now, I'm feeling like I should have another one down here. I don't know. I'm going to look at it and see when it dries, but we'll see. If you have a clamp or something that you can put on here, it would be a good idea to add that to it so that it's not going to um, mess up. However, we did cut these originally. So... I'm going to go ahead and use this as my spacer because it's the same size. And I'm just going to put that there to hold it. That way it'll be square. Alright, we'll let it dry and we'll be back with the next part. Alright, now it's not completely dry, but what I did is I marked a square going completely around and then you want to go um, in the center of that square. So you're going to level it up, or not level it up, but you're going to shape it up right there in the middle of that square, one inch in between. And the square is about an inch in. Yeah, so it's just about an inch in. So you basically want to go two inches into the center of this because it's a four inch square. All right, now I'm going to, um, actually, I'm going to apply some regular glue on here and then I'm going to apply the hot glue to hold it. Now, again, you can use the E6000, but because this is not wood and um, it's a laminate, the actual wood glue doesn't really stick to this. So we're going to just put it on there so it'll stick to the paper because I didn't peel the sticker off either, which you can peel the sticker off. It's just I see no point in it because it wasn't going to be seen. I just applied that glue right there and a little bit right there. You don't need a whole lot of it. I kind of overdid it there, but you get the idea. Now you can kind of just, if the glue is still hot, you can kind of move it inward a little bit if you want. If you want to remove some of it, you can do that too. Just be careful, it's really hot when you're using the hot glue gun. Alright, so we're going to let that cool and I'm going to put it in the freezer because it'll cool quicker in there and then we'll be back. Okay, so it's pretty much dry and then that's what it looks like on the top. And then the bottom. Now, of course, this looks nasty, but you can always just not look at it, or you can use the E6000 if you don't want to see that. Like I said, I know it's nasty looking, but you know, I don't feel like waiting overnight. All right, and this board I got it sitting on is a little wobbly, but it works. Now, you can decide at this point whether you want to stain it or if you want to paint it, whatever you want to do. And as far as like the holes that we drilled, you can just put a little bit of the wood filler in there. And I have found that the best wood filler to use is the color change 
wood filler by Elmer's Carpenter mix because with this it's stainable and it goes on really really easy compared to all the others so you just kind of put a tiny bit in there and it'll fill it right up and then by the time you stain it or paint it or whatever you're gonna do you'll never even know that you had that and you can do the same thing with the top if like these little lines bother you they don't bother me so I'm not worried about it because I mean all tables have those where they meet right. and as far as like chairs and stuff like that you can do the same thing with the chairs that we just did by using the back of the paint stick how it has that curved part in there you can just kind of cut that off and then do your chair from there I'm going to lightly sand this, let it dry good, and then I haven't decided if I'm going to stain it or paint it, but whatever I do, I'll post the picture on my um, Facebook page and on my website. So don't forget to follow Dollhouse Mantra Madness and Tutorials. Um, you can go to the website, which is .com, or you can go to the Facebook channel, both under the Dollhouse Mantra Madness and Tutorials. All right, and if you want to see a lot of pens, check out my Pinterest page because God knows I'm on there a lot whenever we're going somewhere. My husband's driving. I'm always on there, so got lots of time. All right, and I'll talk to you next time.